Right, hello everybody. Let me uh, get um, get myself on the screen a bit bigger. There we go. <laughs> Welcome to day two of the Spanish Wine Week, the online event for the, the wine trade. Um, it's for you to gain knowledge, with, to establish commercial contacts with um, boutique producers and to travel around some of the incredible uh, wineries that we uh, have on the show. Um, and we've got um, industry experts, we've got boutique wine producers, we've got little known regions of Spain, and we've got you, the wine importer, you, the distributor, you, the retailer, you, the on trade, well, it might be waiting around for the COVID to calm down, we've got you uh, to look after, and we've got you, the agent, and we've got you, perhaps, the wine journalist uh, looking in, or wine blogger, um, checking out the, the wines of Spain scene. Um, you'll probably have lots of questions during the event. Uh, we, we've got on our right people starting to um, say hello. Uh, there's a chat feature. Uh, so, so do say good morning, good evening, good night, wherever, whichever time zone you're in. I apologize if there's a, an echo of my voice it's due to the, um, the acoustics we have, so please bear with me. Um, and if you have a question, then simply type in your question at the, on, the, on the box. And uh, question, let me do an example for you. That's me. I'm going to mark it there. And so the, the moderator we have, you can't see the moderator, but it's a, somebody looking and uh, we'll pull out the questions that, and ask to the speaker. All right, so um, I think that's the, um, I think we're ready for uh, Fernando. I just got him out the vineyards uh, just in time to join us. So welcome, Fernando. <laughs> How are you? Welcome back, more like. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now we, we were we were chatting uh, yesterday evening about um, uh, another question for the polls for the quiz, and uh, we came up uh, with this one, uh, which we're going to start now, which is a vine can be considered old when it is at least how many years old? Thirty-five, fifty years, or a hundred years. Um, so, put your answer now, please. I'll give you 30 seconds. Where? Oh, sorry, you haven't seen it yet. <laughs> it would, would help if we uh, publish it. <laughs> Again, a vine can be considered old when it is at least 35 years old, at least 50, or at least 100. Um, so, 20 seconds for your answers, please. I think this is quite interesting question. And it's very yeah. difficult to answer, I think. That's why we are asking this. <laughs> <laughs> well, 72% gone to 50. Um, any more? Yeah, good, good answers, I think. Great. Great, okay. That's, uh, we'll end the poll there. Thank you for um, the answer will be revealed during the, the talk, which is actually called Old Vines, Better Wines. So I'm going to hand you over now to Fernando to take the stage. OK, <clears throat> thank you very much for, for having me here. And thank you very much uh, for, for being interested about uh, Old Vines. First of all, I apolo apologize for my English. I will do my best. <laughs> And um, let me introduce a bit myself. Some of you were yesterday, but so I'm a mechanical engineer. I used to do windmills for power generation, but I became in love with wine and I started my own wine winery in uh, 2008. It's called Bodegas Frontonio. And uh, we started to focus in two main things, Garnacha and the other old vines. So since that point, I started to be in love with old vines and I have been trying to research a lot to justify why sometimes old vines makes the difference. And because sometimes for all of you and also for me, it's difficult to justify 
to a consumer why this one costs a bit more because it comes from over. So let's try to find weapons for fighting. Okay, so let me start the presentation. So this is just the cover. And look at this beauty, beautiful vine. This is a vineyard planted in 1915 to 1918 here in Alpartir. So I have been just today working there. Um, as you can see, when when you go to a vineyard and you want to identify if it's old or not, one of the main indicators is the old wood that you have. Because you know that we, each time that we prune the vines, uh, let me change something for you. If I find that, uh, yeah, here, you will see me here better. Um, sorry, yeah. So um, each time that you prune, the, 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 the old wood grows a bit. No, so usually when you see uh, old vine, usually has more old oak. Also, the shots should be a bit thinner. The perfect shot should be at 10 millimeters thick. And the, and the bunches of grapes are much more smaller with smaller grapes and more airflow inside, okay? So for those that were yesterday, you will see that we are talking about this, some things that are related with yesterday, but many, many new things. And for those new, so today everything is new. So there is no an answer yet to what is an old vine because it's not regulated usually where in a Europe. So there is no a concern about what is old vines, what are old vines. But more or less, it's understood that an old vineyard is at 35 years old. Uh, older than that is considered old vines. Why 35? Because, you know, when you plant a vineyard, the first uh, three years, the first two, two years, you are not producing fruit. Third year, you have the first crop. Uh, and after that, and in the, I think the first five to seven years, the, the root system is just developing because the vine not only grow over ground, but also underground. So the first seven to 10 years, uh, the vine is establishing itself from 10 to 30, 30 something is in the top production. So it starts to, to increase production and the, yeah, over 35 years, it starts the senescence. That means that it's starting to reduce the crop, starting to reduce the vigor, it's less fertile. So many, many different aspects that make that the vine is older at the end. No? So what is happening with the vines get old? The production is decreasing. So we have less grapes. We have less vigor. That, that means that we have less canopy. Less canopy means less leaves. And you need one square meter more or less to ripe one bunch of grapes. So that influence a lot. Uh, usually as more years, the vine has been in the vineyard, the most risk of viruses that you have. The root system of an old vine is fully developed. So that's the greatness, no? That especially in, in dry farming and in poor places, the vines are, the, the, the roots are prospecting all the soil. So every drop of uh, water, every um, organic matter is more is, 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 is more easy to get trapped by the old vine than by the young vine because simply because the roots are everywhere. And the culture of old vines is very important and their storytelling. No? But I don't believe that um, we need to have old vines to, 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 to have a nice story. I think if we really believe in old vines and we are really uh, passionate about old vines, we will have the story. So it's not that we want to build a story, we buy an old vineyard and we show that vineyard to the consumers, but at the end it's only half an hectare and all the other grapes we are taking from the flatlands. It's not that thing. That's bullshit. 
is that we believe in all vines because are creating great grapes and thus we can show that to our customers no? because there is something that is very important is that all vines do not guarantee great wines for sure because at the end uh, an old vine is, is uh, every vintage uh, uh, starts from zero and you can have uh, uh, problems with oil, with the poverty mildew, downy mildew, botrytis, um, or many other things, a hail or whatever. So you, at the end of the harvest, uh, of the harvest, uh, you, 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 for example, you can decide wrong when to harvest. You can do many mistakes. So at the end, the man can have mistakes and make bad wine. No? And also because you can have old vines in a not very nice place with the wrong uh, rootstock or the wrong handling. So it's not that old vines, great wine. It's that 99% of the old vines, great wine. And you will see why. So when I was doing my Master of Wine, I did my research paper uh, regarding how to classificate uh, Spanish wines. Because you know that in Spain, Today, the most important classification for wines, apart of white, rosé, and red, that is very obvious, is the time of aging. So if the wine is young, if it's roble, crianza, reserva, and gran reserva. Do you think that's useful? Uh, useful? Sorry, I don't think so. Because at the end, you can put the worst wine that you have in a barrel, whatever months, and have a gran reserva. So it means nothing, no? So um, my research was about what are the important uh, elements that we need to protect and we need to use to classify the wines of Spain, no? So, so I did a poll, like the poll that we did today, but with the uh, viticulturist and uh, other winemakers, winery owners and the council people, uh, sorry, people from the denomination de origen. And uh, I ask them some some things. One of the most important thing is the question twelve: is the age of the vine influences grape quality? Imagine that ninety percent of the people of the poll were a uh, viticulturist. Eighty-six point seven percent say yes. And it's not me or or a distributor or a journalist that is saying that. This is said by people that are working the vineyard every day, so they really, uh, they they really believe in this, no? So um, uh, there are other parameters linked to 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 the age of the vines, no? Like the dry the the practices, no? Like dry farming, the places with the low poor soils, uh, places with wind that increases aeration slopes uh, and aspect that the, uh, for example in spain that we have 3000 hours of sun per year uh, let's just start in a different way imagine burgundy we are in burgundy so where are the best slopes are north face slopes or or south face slopes for sure are south, uh, south face slopes because they need extra sun to ripe the grapes in spain we exactly need the opposite. So for me, for example, the Grand Cru are the north faces uh, uh, in the mountains, no? So the greatness of all vines in Spain is that they are mainly planted in the mountains. So we are talking about mountain vineyards with more altitude, more uh, slope vineyards, uh, different aspects, and that are influencing a lot uh, the, the, the vineyard and complementing the concept of all vines. So, I, and also, if you have a mountain vineyard, usually you can't irrigate. And for me, if you want to express the vintage and you want to express the, the real soul of a vineyard in Spain, non-irrigation is key. So why old vines? Why we have old vines today? First, because someone has been doing a good job along 60, 70, 80 years. They choose their, their, their right rootstock and vinifera selection. They choose the right place with the right soil, and they have a handle properly. No, this is these are the three main things. But also some fortuity happens. So, for example, the virosis that that, um, that influences the vineyard decreases, for example, a bit 
the uh, bigger. So that means that you have a smaller, a smaller grapes and not so tight bunches, no? Uh, historical episodes that made that the wine, uh, the, the, these vineyards were not removed together with personal facts. So imagine, for example, that um, a region is very profitable. We were talking about Rioja yesterday, but Rioja also have very nice examples of old vineyards. But imagine a place where you can produce, someone is not, is, is paying a good amount of money per kilogram of grapes, but, uh, and you have an old vineyard, but they are paying the same price for all the vines, no? For all the grapes. So at the end, people remove the old vineyards because simply um, they, they can plant with that rights in other place to take more grapes per uh, hectare. So at the end, that makes that the old vineyards disappear. No? Um, more or less that that's related with the concept of lack of profitability that you have there and also emotions so a vineyard was planted by by probably two generations before you so you don't want to remove that vineyard because it's part of the heritage that you receive the same like a house so people is very connected at least in our land and in spain with the vineyards from their families no? that's quite beautiful but also there are technical facts related with old vines that I would like to explain to you. So as older the vineyard, the, the crop moderation is higher. So why? Because especially because the senescence, the, 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 the subconducts are, uh, so the conducts are not so, the, the sap can't flow so well by the conducts of the sap. So at the end, um, the vigor is, is, is decreasing a bit and also you have less fertility, you have less bats, you have thus, less shots and thus you have less bunches, no? And also the virus is balanced that I told you before. Uh, something very important in all vineyards are the vinifera selection. Now, when we want to plant a vineyard, usually what we are doing is that we are going to a nursery and we are saying, hey, I have a, a, a I want to plant a vineyard two hectares with this uh, soil, and you can see, for example, the limestone, the blah 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 blah, all these these facts. And with that, they recommend, and I want to plant tempranillo or garnacha, and they recommend you. Oh, so you should use this rootstock with this clone of garnacha or of tempranillo, and you plant these two hectares with the recommendation of the nursery or the ag agronomist or whatever. No? In the past, this didn't happen. In the past, uh, the, the, someone who wanted to, to, to plant a vineyard, first they planted just the rootstock and they filled graft. And what was the, the vinifera material for field grafting? That was material from a vineyard, usually a vineyard, viticulturist, like it, no? So, and sometimes, uh, you have in the same vineyard 40, 50 different uh, species of, of, of uh, garnacha, or even you have different uh, varieties in the same vineyard. And this is like a gem now because this vineyard has a unique flavor. At the end, if you are using the same clone, everything tastes more or less the same. No, And we are making wine. We are not making Coca-Cola. No? Sorry for Coca-Cola, but it's quite different to what we are trying to do. No, so at the end, we can choose, uh, in the past, people used a very, very, um, selected very carefully the rootstock uh, and, and the steel, no? Uh, so I think I have talked about this. And at the end, the word is heterogeneity. So this vineyard tastes different than this other, and this other different than this other. No? Uh, the other technical fact is that the, 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 the the old vine is very well, the old vineyard is very well adapted to the place, especially because the root system is, is fully developed. So they are prospecting all the soil. So they are, they have more availability, availability of all the inputs. No. And also, I think, I think I told you before, but it's very important for me. This thing. Do you think a vineyard is, an old vineyard is only great 
because of the age? No, it's because of where it was planted. Remember that in the past, 100 years ago, who had the best places, the land for planting vegetables or planting uh, cereals or whatever? Rich people had that, that, no? In the flatlands. And if you were poor, what did you have? You have the highest slopes, the poorest soils. That places were not able for any other crop but olive oils, uh, olive trees, sorry, almond trees or vines. That's why many, many vineyards are planted in that slopes. Today, do you think people want to plant grapes there? Only some crazy people like us, for example, that really, really love these places and we understand that we want to create Grand Cruz are doing this. But usually people is planting the flatlands. So in the future, 100 years later, that vineyards in the flatlands with irrigation and everything are not going to be the same quality that the old vines of today. And this is something very, very important. There are more facts. It's like, like uh, I think old vines are less sensible to vintages because as you have more, more roots, uh, for example, in a drought year, you have more availability of resources, but also due to viruses, you don't have very, very high vigor any year. So you have like moderate yields always. No? The food developed root system that I have been talking three, four times because it's one of the main things. Uh, and also this is quite important. You know that the, the vine in winter uh, enters in a dormancy period. Uh, and uh, when the temperature is above 10 uh, Celsius degrees in spring, it comes it come back to life, you know, more or less, just for you to understand. So at the beginning, as the plant after pruning has no leaves, they need reserves for starting to produce again, to bud burst and to produce the first shots, the first leaves, and to start to generate uh, photosynthesis. No? So as more amount of old wood you have that is not pruned, you will have more of these reserves, no? especially starch. So that's another advantage of, of, of the old vines. And regarding to the sap flow that we have been talking before, the scars from old vines are making difficult the sap circulation. And that means that at the end you are accumulating more sugars in the branches and other compounds are polyphenols. So at the end we are having, we are having something different, a different composition in the grapes. And this is quite important because at the end we are, so the, we can demonstrate with this that old vines are making the difference in the grapes not only in the view. No? So this is an example of how grapes from old vines of Garnacha, for example, from our region are. No? Can you see how small they are? How the, the bunches are with loose berries, small bunches? This is caviar, caviar of Garnacha. No? And this is not always the case. If you have Garnacha, for example, from a young irrigated vineyard, with high production, you will have bunches that are three, four times that bunches with grapes that are 1.8 times that berries. So the thing is quite different. Imagine, for those of you that were not yesterday, that if you have a bunch that is small and loose, the aeration is great, so you have botrytis, but also another thing is that um, if you have a bunch, the grapes inside the bunch, sometimes they don't receive enough light. So at the end, they are not going to ripe and you will have green flavors in the wine later. In this loose uh, berries in a bunch, uh, you are going to have fully ripeness in all the grapes. Um, this is a graph that makes you to see the relationship between vineyard age and yield per hectare. And you are going to see that like, when you have a vineyard that is like uh, five to 10 years, you are producing, in this is in a, non-irrigated vineyard in Aragon, okay? So you are you can take nine tons per hectare. When you have the vine between 20 to 30 years, you have decreased to 6.5 tons per hectare. But when you are older than 40 years old, you are less than 3.5 tons per hectare. 
And I can tell you that when you have a vineyard that is 100 years old, sometimes we are taking one ton per 1.5 hectares. So one ton per 1.5 hectares. That means that we are taking 700 kilos more or less per hectare. And we need to show, we need to make with this so great wine that when people taste it, they are going to, to, to understand that this comes from old vines and the taste is different and better. But not everything is beautiful in, a, in old vines. So they are producing sometimes low production if you, don't, if you can't charge. Because imagine if you are taking only 700 kilos per one hectare, that means that you can do more or less. 700 bottles per hectare. If you are charging 5x seller for, for that, you are going to remove that vineyard. You need to sell that bottle of wine, I don't know, let's say 20, 25 at least to make this profitable. So why, why the vines are reducing profit um, so production, especially because of viruses, because of the soil sometimes is very, very poor, and because sometimes the people is getting older and they can't handle the vineyard. So at the end, we have lots of weeds, and the weeds are making, are drinking the water and eating the food of the vines. And also, you are not doing the right pruning, many, many things. But also because in the past, some, plant, some old vineyards were planted with the wrong vegetal Selection, so that means that the vinifera was not the not was not uh, good enough, or the rootstocks were not uh, the, the right ones for that soils. Uh, sometimes it's because you have so many different plantings in the vineyard that some of the grapes are very short cycle ripening, and some other are very long cycle. So you need to do two different harvests to 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 make good wine. Um, and for sure, if you have a place that you can have an old vineyard that the root system couldn't really develop well, that could happen. It's not very frequent, that can happen. So this is an article of, of the Cantor talking about the a bit about old vines because how is too old? This is quite interesting, no? Because um, for us, 120 years is the maximum that we can have in Spain because we have phylloxera, like in many places in the world. So everything needed to be removed and grafted. But you have some places like uh, Santorini or Canary Islands in Spain where you did have phylloxera. So there are bites that can be 200, 300 years old. And as you are removing and cutting and cutting and cutting, at the end you are renewing the vine all the time. So that means that vines never die, no? Very, very nice sentence. <laughs> this is an example of a old vineyard. This is planted in the 40s, late 30s. And look at the magic of this place, no? This is called La Sotera. It's a vineyard in Alparque. And uh, you think this is very difficult to work. You can see almond trees together with the vines, different parcel, micro parcels. Do you think if this vineyard produces bad grapes, anybody could maintain this vineyard? No. This is maintained because the grapes that this producing that are, uh, is, this vineyard is producing are amazing. No? Because it's very difficult to work and it's very low in production. And here let's 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 talk about ethics, and this is very important for me. And you are, as me, we are selling, and we are we, we we need to make the difference between the things that are true or false. So it's impossible to produce a wine from old vines that is a seller price 1.1 euros. It's simply impossible. So if someone writes that in the label that is happening, and you can see in many supermarkets, that's false, simply false. It's the same like Grand Reserve as 1.1 euros. It's impossible, it's simply impossible. So, but people from marketing departments know very well that the magic words are, I don't, 
do not care. All vines alter ripen viñas viejas till vines of viña vecchia. At the end, is the, the same. No, I, I'm saying that in this in this bottle, I can. This bottle means nothing. But when you see here, all vines means something. No, but if at the end, this bottle is going to finish in a supermarket at uh, 3.99 or 2.99. It doesn't matter that you are using that marketing tool here, because later when you will have a real old wine wine, you will can't market because you have done the job with a cheap wine. Uh, the biggest problem is not from the people, it's because uh, we don't have regulation for this. So any, anyone can put the words on the label and it's impossible to make cheap wines from all wines. Just remember this. When someone is sell selling you, I um, so, especially with very, very old vines. Let me explain. If you have a big, you can produce a wine at seller price, three euros with vines that are 30 to 40 years old. Yeah, this is possible. It's not a difficult thing in Spain. But that people that told you that the, I'm producing a wine of two euros with vines that are 80 to 100 years old. If you buy that, at least you should know that that, 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 that that's not true. Okay. Uh, let me show you why. Because these are more or less a cost breakdown of a, of a cost of one kilo of grapes from old vines, no? And in dry farming. So you have that in four different years, you have a cost of from 0.89 to 1.01 euros and this is just the cost of production with no profit for anybody so imagine that if you the, the, the viticulturist needs at least i don't know 20 cents 30 cents so you have minimum price of the grapes at 1.3 euros one kilo one kilo, one bottle, more or less. Uh, you need to wine make the wine, and you need to to age the wine. Where in oak, you need to put a bottle and a cork and a, a label, seventy cents more. So at the end, you cut, you have a cost of three euros, four euros, five euros. So just yes, for you to think about this. For me, it's very very important. This is uh, another vineyard. Again, if you are making a wine, a very, very good wine with all vines, and uh, you have an amazing place, this is a real storytelling. And you just need to show the distributors or, uh, or, or the consumers this, and taste the wine, and people will say, I want that, no? Uh, so, the key thing for maintaining the old vines of Spain that are disappearing because uh, people are not making money with them, what we need to do is to transfer the price to the consumer because the farmer must be rewarded to, for maintaining the vineyard because if not, at the end, they will remove with that and with that rights will plant in the, in, in the flatlands, no? The, the wine in the market should be higher priced and the consumer might understand the superiority of the product. So we need to make a better wine with these vineyards. If not, we can't maintain them. So that's why I decided to do a classification system based in the age of the wines. And I created the V 3 b system. So V one is vino classificado. I think I have here, sorry, let me show you this. Uh, well, okay, I will show you later. So let me show you a couple of people what, what they say. Uh, talking about, in this case, is about Aragon. There are three traces in our area that we need to include in the classification. Garnacha, the age of the, wine, the vines, and the soil, which need to be linked to the producer. This is Jorge Navasquez, a very important producer here in Aragon. The most important thing is that uh, the classification protects the vineyard. We are losing, uh, losing historical vineyards and we have to move to safeguard them. This is Amaya Cervera from Spanish Wine Lover. I think the most important journalist at the moment in Spain. No? So these are two very important facts that we need to remember. 
So we decided to look for uh, other regions in the world that classify by old vines. And we found that Barossa has a classification for old vines called Barossa Old Vines Charter. And Viño in Chile is a Viñadores de Cariñan. Also, they created an association for producing these vines and recovering the, the old vines of Cariñan from Maule Valley. And they they to produce that vines that, that wines at least you need to have a vineyard older than 35 years old so that's quite cool now in the new classification in spain of bierzo and priorat that are more like in the burgundian way for the top categories you need also at least some years uh, old of the vineyard uh, i explained this and let me move a bit so the key concept of old vines is that, uh, so old vines, people can understand old vines and an old vine do not guarantee a high quality wine, but it is a differentiating its historical and cultural factor. The vast majority of old vines have tasted, have lasted through time due to their quality. So sorry for this, but uh, the, the, the main thing is that old vines, as we have seen, is a concept that people understand. You know? And that's why we created these three categories. Vino clasificado, that means uh, wine coming from a specific vineyard. Two Bs, vino de viña clasificada, a vineyard of, or group of vineyards that fully specify the requirements, but at least with 20 years old age. And three Bs is vineyards older than 40 years old, you know, with traceability of age. So as with this, we, we have something that we really can transfer to the consumer. So. Uh, ah, this is very important uh, and interesting checklist. Let me tell you, this is related with old vines, but also is related with classification. Sorry for this, but I think it's quite interesting. So I created a, 10 recommendations for classifying wines. First thing is that a wine blended with from two or more vineyards can be as good as one from a single vineyard. Villages are historical indications of origin, but do not guarantee a certain quality level. This is very important because we are talking in Spain about village wines, but in a village you can have good vineyards and bad vineyards. No? The key parameters of each area should be identified to develop them in the classification. That means if you are doing a system, classification system for all Spain, you can't use the same parameters for all the regions because they are different. And this is the greatness of Spain that we have many different regions with many different um, with many different parameters, no? Uh, we need to create a system that is simple and easy to explain. We have a problem is that every region in Spain are, is developing a different classification system. Do you think people in the world is prepared to take their time to check, oh, this is a classification from Bierzo and it's like this. Let me check in the internet. Ah, this is a classification of uh, Aragon. Let me check. No, people is not going to do that. So we need to find a solution for everybody, no? Uh, try to create a standard classification system across different areas of Spain should increase the consumer recognition. Yeah, we, we need to say Spanish wines are recognized, are classified like this, no? Uh, a, vine, a vineyard do not guarantee a good wine is the vineyard and the people who are making the wine. Uh, we can do this public or private, so we can do also uh, uh, private classification, for example, like in VDP in uh, Germany. So I don't know if you have heard about uh, Futuro Viñador, it's a new classification in Spain. They have, there are some producers inside and they are raising their standards to, to put a seal in the label and that will, that will guarantee higher standards than the base standards of the appellations. Uh, and the definition of a classification system is only the first stage, but it's very difficult to communicate, as you really know. And we need to think in everybody, not just in ourselves. No? And let me show you something. When someone is, is talking to you about old vineyards, uh, Spain has something great, is that in 1956 or 7, an uh, American flight took photographs of all the Peninsula Iberica. So we can check them in the internet and we can see if that area was planted at that time or not. So, for example, when we, we bought El Jardín de las Iguales, or one of our, uh, well, our most special vineyard, we could see these photos and we saw that here, um, 
This was planted under vines. This was planted under vines with some almond trees in the middle and olive trees. So we could see that all this part that at the moment was not planted were, were vineyards at the past and we started to recover them. But we saw that this was a real old vineyard before uh, buying that. Another picture of a very nice vineyard. And uh, this is it from my side. Just we need to save the old vines and we need to do this together. Because it's not only that we can do something technical here for saving that, is that also you, the people who are explaining our wines in the world, need to believe in and need to know how to communicate. So thank you very much. You have here also my Instagram, just in case you want to, to follow me. I am always talking about garnacha, old wines, traditional wine making. If you like this play, these things, please follow me. And Thank you very much for listening. Thank you. Thank you, Fernando. Um, we've got one, a question from Ken. Yeah. Uh, after a lot of winemakers moving away from classifying their wines to age already, even in Rioja? Uh, yeah, it's true. Yeah. So um, in Rioja, it's, it's, it's true that also in Rioja it's happening. But it's more difficult in Rioja because I think the, the movement of classifying wines by age was born in Rioja, in Spain. So it's very traditional and the consumers are paying more, more, more money for a Gran Reserva from Rioja. So that makes that the people still use that classification. But, in, but, but imagine, for example, let, let's talk about Aragon. No, in Aragon, we have uh, why we need to sell the most expensive wine from our winery, a Gran Reserva. If sometimes Garnacha do not need to be 24 months or whatever inside a barrel to be better. No, we, what we need to do is create a great wine from great grapes that come from a great vineyard. And the same like in Aragon is happening in, uh, in many other parts of Spain. So we are leaving this classification system and we are just we are just writing the name of the vineyard in the label. So or the or the vineyards, no? Or the age of the vines or many other concepts that I, at the end are showing the consumer that the wine comes from uh, a specific place with a vine that are this age. So we are giving real uh, information about the quality of the grapes of the wine that they are buying or drinking. Okay. I don't see any other questions. I, I've got one, uh, yeah. which um, which um, pricks my ears a little bit. Was the the fact that there's no regulation on on putting uh, old vines on the bottle, and so you, you say you can get the bottle three ninety nine in Tesco or in the yeah. UK or. or Two ninety nine little, and it's got old vines on it. And I think I've fallen for this and, and bought a bottle and was disappointed, uh, expecting something better. So, so to answer the question of the seminar, old vines, better wines. Uh, what depends on <laughs> depends on, uh, uh, or, or it's pot luck. Um, yeah, somebody's putting old vines on their labels. Uh, and and like Paul, what what is old vines? Uh, for some, it could be twenty years, and officially, or is it official? It's thirty five years minimum. Um, a kind of the consumer uh, and the wine importer, uh, uh, you know, it's kind of difficult for them to market. Uh, I would imagine this this um, the concept uh, to the consumer of old vines. On the one hand, it could be ten years. On the other, on the other hand, it could be 50 years, uh, and there's just uh, for the consumer no 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 point of reference really to um, to take a decision. So 3.99 old wine sounds like a good deal. Yeah, but the, so the unique thing here is that do not expect miracles, and this is the thing. So I, I, I hope after the presentation you have seen that it's impossible to make old wines wines. At a very very cheap wine uh, price, so that that means that it's impossible to find a wine 
from real gold mines of a great vineyard at 3.99. And we need to know that. And if we know that, now we can start to build the reputation of the real old vines wines. And this is what I mean, because nobody is going to work at old vineyard if they, it's not producing great grapes. All, all the winemakers like, that we really believe in this, we are working too much for producing these grapes. And we really believe in them. So, so we need to transfer that price to the consumer. And if the consumer tastes the wine and feels the difference, is going to buy another bottle. And this is how everything works, no? I think. Uh, we have another question. Yeah. Yeah, Ken's just uh, come back again and said had a similar concept yesterday with Corpinat. Um, yeah. yeah. The, 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 the main thing here in Spain is that um, there is like a Spanish wine revolution at the moment here. And uh, many people are trying to demonstrate the greatness of some places. And for that, you need to find your way. And if the regulations are not helping you, you need to find private associations for doing this. But this can confuse the consumer because it's too much information. And at the end of the day, some people just want to say, I have this money, I want to buy great wine, and I don't want more information. So that depends on the segment, because also there is a niche where it, these connoisseurs that are really interested about super, super top wine, and they want all the details. So that depends on the, the markets of your winery. The marketing should be different. There is no a recipe for everybody. Each one needs to find its way. I see. Uh, well, William Reynolds from, I think, from the USA is uh, saying, is there any research being done to, to mimic the physical attributes of all vines in younger plants? Uh, sorry, I'm not, sorry, I'm not pretty sure that there is any research being done. What that means, mimic, sorry for that, what that means? Research, investigation. No, no, mimic, mimic. Okay, uh, mimic to, um, to copy. Ah, it's a good point of view. I never thought in that. Uh, I don't think so. But yeah, but let me explain something. Great. Uh, so all vineyards means that naturally you have regulation of vigor and crop. So that means that naturally that wine is going to produce very, very nice grapes. But a young vineyard with a great handling reducing vigor or reducing the crop with green harvest and many things also can produce great great grapes so at the end uh, i don't know if you i answered you a bit it's not that we need to find something to imitate all vines we just need to handle the vineyard in the right way for producing grapes that are almost as good as the old vines almost but there are some difference because when i taste vines uh, be, be before harvest or when when I am harvesting, always I can difference specific vineyards from old vines from those that are from younger vines, even if they are great hunter. I don't know if I answered. I, I hope. Hmm. Yeah, we we had it on yesterday, and the live interview is a, a producer from uh, Tenerife, from the Valle de la Orotava. No. Atlante, Atlante. He was saying that uh, he had uh, vines of 100 to 150 years old. Is, is that um, is that often the, often the case that vines can can live that long? All, yeah, in, in Canary Islands, yes, because in Canary Islands they didn't have phylloxera. Okay. They they didn't need to to grab up grapes, uh, vines, and plant again. They have these old vines. Yeah. It's not it's not one hundred percent of the vines from Orotava are old, but they can have some parcels. So that that's great, and it's one of the great the greatest things of of the Canary Islands. I see. Okay, I think uh, we've uh, exhausted the questions. You've um, and have a brilliant uh, presentation, Fernando Mora, Master of Wine. Thank you very much. Gracias. Gracias. Thank you very much, everybody. And thank you but, for having me. We're going to stay, stay live because uh, I've got um, a couple of vi videos from the
producers come in in the live interviews. Okay. So uh, I'm going to uh, so, so see if we, we can spot um, some old vines in these videos. Uh, the first one, we're going up to, uh, let's see, let's go to, um, let's go to Vieto and uh, see what they're doing. This producer has got... Godelia is the result of the following formula, passion, perseverance and tenacity. The Garcia Godelia Rodriguez family, the result of the founders of the winery, passion, created Godelia with one thing in mind, to not be satisfied the until they reach excellence. Their enthusiasm for viticulture in over 35 acres of vineyards spread through different lots at Their different heights and orientations. Agriculture is the base of the project and the passion of their family. Asim and Rodelia are the family. Although they care for the project as if it were their own, they put their backs into the getting the best out of the varieties they harvest. Although they care for the project as if it were their own, and they put their backs into getting the best out of the varieties they harvest. They pour their hearts into creating a wine reference with a DNA that reflects the feminine delicacy with which it's made. They pour their hearts into creating a wine reference with a DNA that reflects the feminine delicacy with which it's made. Perseverance, never forgetting their origins. Enjoy the result. Passion, perseverance, and tenacity. Enjoy the result. Okay. Um, I hope that came through good. It came through without any um, feedback. <laughs> uh, I'm going to uh, just one more before we um, uh, sign off and uh, get ready for the live interviews next session. Uh, this time we're going to um, up to the Rivera del Duero, Bogde de Resalte. Okay, so that's the um, first one was uh, from the Dio Vieto, Godelia, and the second one was from the Rivera de Duero, uh, Bodegas for South. Both of these producers are featured on the live interviews. Uh, in fact, I think both are up next, so um, stay tuned. Uh, we're going to take a tea break now, wine break, depending on what time of day, and uh, we're going to put the link 
to the next session at the top of the um, chat box that you see. We hope that my technical department will paste it up there. Uh, if not, uh, if it doesn't go up, then do check the email you've been sent or the, on the website and just click on the link and join the, um, yeah, there it is. Sorry, I was <laughs> somewhere else, so I didn't see it. So just click on there. 3.15, we'll be back. Uh, see you all then and, and more of you. Bye for now.